The next thing we're going to build on our website is this testimonial slider. I do sliders pretty much on every single project, not because I'm, I just really, really love sliders. Clients love them, designers love them, they show up on most projects. Uh, developers, at least in Webflow, don't love them because uh, Webflow's native slider isn't amazing. It kind of gets the job done if it's a simple slider, but if you're doing anything a little bit more complex, especially if you're doing something that has CMS collections, Webflow slider uh, just doesn't really cut it if you're not using external tools. So I'm going to show you a little bit, uh, just an example of Webflow's native slider if you do want to use it, but I am going to show you how to create a completely custom CMS slider. So this is some premium content here because every website has a slider. I've already gone in and added a section with our background black. I went ahead and copied our div from up here uh, and just pasted it down here. So we're all ready for a slider. If I were to do Webflow's native one, you can see that it automatically pastes in a component similar to the way our nav bar was. If I go into the navigator, you can see it comes with a couple of slides, left arrow, right arrow, a side nav. But using this, we can't add in a CMS collection, so it can't really be a dynamic slider. Everything in here has got to be static. So we are going to go ahead and set up a CMS testimonial slider so that our client can easily add testimonials to the new website. So I'm going to get rid of this and dive into our CMS tab. And we don't have any collections yet, but if we're on a plan where we can add collections, we can go ahead and create a new collection. Now there's a bunch of default collections you can do. Like if you're creating a blog, this might be a great tool to just go ahead and click this and it'll add all the fields you need, but we are going to create this from scratch. This is going to be called testimonials. Name is going to be the name of our person giving the quote. I'll add in a text field to add in their title. I will add in a multiple line text field for their quote. You could also use a rich text for this if you're wanting to add like a bunch of italics and bolds, but I'm just going to do plain text for this one. And then I'm also going to add an image field for their logo. So that is all we need there. So we've got the name, title, quote, image. If there was anything else in here, we could add it in at this time, but I think that's pretty good. So we'll do create collection. We could add in some sample items, but hopefully you've already collected all of the testimonials like I have. And in here, I believe, yes, we have a Google Sheets file that has all of the testimonials we need. If you're ever doing CMS work where you're adding in a bunch of items at once, I highly recommend putting it into a Google Sheet if you can. It can be pretty tedious to go in here and create new testimonial for every single item if you have a whole bunch. I only have a few testimonials, but this was still way faster than adding them all in one at a time. So you'll have in the name, title, quote, all is text. And then if you have any images, they're going to want to be brought in as links. So I've already built this once, so I'm bringing them in as links from a different project. That is how you would do that. Or you could just upload them in one at a time. So from here, I'm going to do export download as CSV. And then I'm going to come into Webflow, click import. I'm going to choose my testimonial CSV. It's going to ask if this is the header so it doesn't count it as an item. And it looks like everything is in here and I can just kind of look through to, to make sure that everything was brought over. It looks like it was, so I will, I don't need to make a backup. So looks like we're good and everything's in here. So that is great. Now that that is in, we are going to just go ahead and add in our collection. So I can click collection list here. And to add in a collection, you always have to specify which collection it is. And it'll automatically show you all of the ones that are in here. If we go back to Swiper JS collection, you can see that it tells us to add some certain classes to each of these collections so that we can use that library. The first thing we are going to start is with the very outer wrapper, which we can kind of see here, it's three levels as well. This will be Swiper, and I'm gonna give it a, an additional class of testimonials. 
Inside of that, we are going to call it Swiper Wrapper. And then our item is going to be called Swiper Slide. So we have each of those in here. And now it is time to style everything. So I am going to dive into first the Swiper Wrapper and do it as a flex box, similar to how we did it before. And I'm going to do our Swiper Slide, and give it a width of, let's say 25% and make it that it doesn't shrink. That is our, our flex here. I'm also going to give it a minimum height, which I will check in here of about 547. So we'll call that. How much is that? About 18. Oh wait, was it? No, it was 34. <laughs> that is really, really large. How about we call it 30 instead? And I'll do a background color of that dark red. And now I can tell that it's going overboard on the side. So I am just going to do a hard cutoff here. So overflow hidden. Another thing is that it is staying within my container and in the design, I want it to go to either side. So I am actually going to put this right outside my container. So it spans the whole width of my website. Next, I'm going to put in an image. This is going to be testimonial logo. I'm going to choose not a static image, but if I go in here and see the little purple icon, I can connect the data to logo and it'll pull in all the logos from our CMS collection. Going back to the design, it looks like I'll also need a paragraph block. So we'll do paragraph, and this is going to connect to quote. I'm also going to wrap this in a div block along with our logo. And then a separate div block is going to have a text block with the name of the person. I'm going to duplicate that, and this next one will be the title. Now, I don't want it to be black, so on our swiper slide, I'm going to change the typography to white. I'm also going to set a flex vertical in between so that in our design, it shows the top and the bottom. One thing I am noticing is I don't think I got it in the section, actually, because there's no margin on the bottom. There we go. All right. So I also want some padding on either side. Let me see what I had in Figma. We got 42 at the top and then about 30 on the side. So this one isn't as precise, but because I know a little bit of design, I'm going to make it so. So we'll do two rem on either side here, two. And then what's 40 divided by 16? 2.5 on the top. In our testimonial logo, I think I do want this to span across. No, it should stay on the bottom, but it should have a bottom margin of about two rem. So we'll do two rem on the bottom here. And I think I want this paragraph to be our paragraph large. As I'm going through this, you'll notice that I'm not having to change every single one of them. The class is getting applied to every single one. So any changes you make to one will also apply to all of the rest of the items in the collection list. Speaking of, I'm going to title this bottom one testimonial title wrap. And I'm going to kind of force the margin here so ones like this don't get rammed up against each other. And then I'm going to title this one testimonial name and give it a weight of medium and also bump up the line height. So that works a little better. And I might shrink this text down a little bit too. Let me check if that is actually the case in here. But it's not. So I'm going to put it back to normal and see how it looks here. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. We have some base styling in here now, and now's the point where I'm going to start to approach our swiper JS. So we hop back into our kind of list of instructions here. They do a bunch of styling, which I just did. The next thing we're going to want to add is our scripts. So, for this first one, we're going to link this in the heading tag. So we'll go to pages, home, 
and scroll all the way down to custom code. So the first one is things inside the head tag, which is going to be our style sheet. And then below it in the body tag section, we're going to have our script tag. So if I scroll down here, I can add that in here. After this, the next thing we're going to want to do is initialize our slider. So this is some examples of some different parameters that they add to initialize the slider. So we're going to just copy these by default and see what happens in ours. This is kind of the way I like to roll with just following things from a tutorial. So we will drop this in here. The main thing we'll want to change is theirs was called Swiper Movies. Ours was called Testimonials. Testimonials. So I'll hit save and let's just see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click publish. We haven't even published it yet. Uh, and the reason we're publishing it is because scripts, you cannot see them on the designer. You have to publish them to a live site to see them render. We've got our website. It's looking pretty good so far. Uh, and yeah, you can see that we're getting this really cool cover flow slider. This isn't the same effect we want, but it's good to know that the slider is working in here. And that means that we can start changing some settings to our specific design. So if I go into the swiper documentation, if you click API, which sounds very scary, but stay with me and you go to parameters, you get a whole bunch of options for what you want your slider to do specifically. Things like breakpoints, centered slides. So this is something that we will be wanting in ours. So I'm just going to go back here to our effects and I am going to remove the cover flow effect. We do want centered slides. Slides per view is going to be how many slides are at our smallest breakpoint. So at our smallest breakpoint, I actually want to tease a little bit of the next slide. If you look at the design here, it'd be nice to have a little bit on either side just to show that it is indeed a slider. Uh, so we'll do slides per view 1.1. Loop is going to be true. Uh, another thing we want to add in here is space between. I'd rather add this with the swiper JS code because um, if I do it in Webflow, sometimes the Webflow styling and the Swiper JS styling can compete. So space between is something I just like to add in, add in in Swiper JS. And this is also going to uh, default to the smallest view. So I'm gonna do 10 on mobile. Create elements. I don't think we need that, so I'm gonna remove that. Another thing I want to do is looped slides. So because we're doing an infinite loop, we're going to sh at least make the loop slides five. That way nothing cuts off because otherwise it might just show a certain number. So just setting a default of five here. Another setting we'll want to add is slide to clicked slide is true. And that will allow us to, um, if I click on one over here, it'll go to the middle. A few more settings, autoplay is true. I also want to do keyboard true so that users can go through the slides with their keyboard. Like I said here, our slides per view is defaulting to our smallest breakpoint. So from here, I am going to adjust a little bit the, the breakpoints we have. So over 640, it's saying that's when we bump up to two. I think we'll actually bump up to three here and then on our larger breakpoints, so I'll call that 950, making sure I'm getting all the syntax correct. This will be, I'm just gonna copy this. Slides per view is going to be four. And I'll also change the space between as well to be 20. All right, so let's save that and see where we're at if we publish. Great. So this is looking pretty good. We can slide this way. We're getting the center one. I think that looks pretty good. One thing that we want to change is the 
inactive slides, we want them to be a little bit more opaque, if you'll notice how it is here. And another thing is we also want to change our pagination. If I look at this right now, I think the pagination, if I go ahead and inspect, I think it's in here, it just might be kind of dark because I think it does add it in by default. Let's see. Nope, so I think we'll need to add our pagination as well. So let's go back into our code. Just did a little bit of research and found out that create elements was important. That is what adds the pagination. So I added that setting in. And if we look at it now, you can see that there is a little pagination here at the bottom. Now to customize this further, there are a few different ways that I kind of approach this, this type of work. For example, it looks like it's not completely inheriting the height, like these, this is not going down all the way. Something else is if I look in here in our code, so what I did is just click inspect. I can go in to the swiper and kind of see what's going on. And one thing I noticed as I was in here is that whichever swiper is active, whichever slide is active, gets its own class of swiper slide active. That means we can use that specific class to style the active one in Webflow. So that's kind of nice. So if I go into Webflow, I can do swiper slide active. And I'm going to set the opacity of this to 100%, which they already are. But if I remove this, I can set the opacity to, let's say 70. I think that is pretty close to what we had before. So that's good. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show here is our pagination. So in here, we can see that it's kind of down at the bottom, but on our landing page, it kind of sits over our frame. So I'm going to open up the custom code block here and add in some additional styles for our testimonials sliders pagination. So one of the ways to kind of change the styles here would just to do what I just did and go into the inspector and kind of figure out the classes and override them. But there are some properties that we can just look at the API and figure out. So one of those is going to be our pagination. So if you look into modules, pagination, and scroll through, you can see there's a whole bunch of different settings we can change in here. What I wanted to point out though is the custom CSS properties. So in here, what we're really interested in is the color, because right now it's blue and white. And if I just look for hex codes, you'll probably find that in here. Yep, so we've got our inactive color and our regular color. So the way that I am going to change this in my code is I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And then here I'm going to do root and then this will allow me to change those variables. So I'm going to add in color and I'm going to change this to that yellow color. So I'll open up my variables, look for yellow and then copy this variable here. This is a great way to just start kind of taking advantage of variables and things that are a little bit more complex to keep your project looking really clean and consistent. So that is our pagination color. Then I also want to change the inactive color one too. So I'll add this in and change it to the same yellow color. There was also the inactive opacity, which is two. I think that's going to be a little too dark for this color. So I'm going to bump it up to 0.5. And just to show you what that did, or just to make sure it worked, we're going to publish that and see if it changed the color. So let's open this up. And yeah, now we can see it is yellow. And our active class is changing too. <laughs> Totally forgot the name here. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is move this a little bit lower. 
and I don't think there are like automatically CSS classes for this whole thing. So I'm just going to customize the swiper pagination class directly and override some of those styles. So if I hop in here back into my code editor, I'm going to do swiper pagination and just override some styles here. I'm going to make the position static. And I'm also going to do a margin top of three rems. This is going to pull it off of my card and put it below, but put in a little bit of space. So let's see how that looks. And I have so many open here, so I'm just going to refresh this page. And yeah, that looks pretty great. And I'm using the keyboard and it's going through. The last thing I'll want to do is just sort of see how it scales down to mobile. Like this kind of feels too squished. So maybe around the 600, it breaks down into that 1.1 instead of on um, a desktop. Or at least two. Let's see where it was before. Just a little bit of fine tuning here. Yeah, how about we do 2.2? Yeah, I think that's a lot better. Cool. And that is our custom CMS slider. And next we'll move on to forms. If you found this video useful and want to learn more, be sure to check out our complete guide to Webflow tutorial. It provides comprehensive tutorials and expert guidance to help you build professional grade websites and also has courses on other no-code tools. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, share it with a friend, and if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.